Good morning, everyone. So we are back on our third day of the Virtual Developers Conference, and we have a great day ahead of us. And actually, I'll be your first speaker. And upcoming sessions today are going to be about containers. We have some machine learning and two sessions on event sourcing, Kubernetes, and CI and CD. Hope you will be sticking with us, with us throughout the day. Good morning, Stage. How's it going? Thank you, Neil. How are you? Are you ready for your presentation? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, Neil, everybody who has been our host since uh, day one, since uh, Wednesday, is going to have his presentation today. And he is proudly representing Event Store. Ooh. Yes, thank you. Actually, we have three Event Store sessions today, so really looking forward to that. Awesome. In, uh, in Avengers Tower itself, or...? Yes, in, in Avengers Tower. In Avengers Tower. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Great. Um, uh, whenever you're ready, Neil, we can proceed. <laughs> it's weird yeah. to, to host you. <laughs> weird okay, sure. Hello, I'm Neil. I'm a DevOps engineer at Event Store. And today I'll be talking about modern infrastructure as code with Prumi. Let's jump right into it. So, when you're running your applications in the cloud, there are various aspects of the infrastructure that you need to take care of, like your images, maybe container images, you're doing that, your virtual machines, databases, and security. And especially nowadays where our application architecture is more service driven rather than having a single monolithic thing. Uh, this becomes hard to manage as our application scales and infrastructure as code uh, is a reliable way to describe our infrastructure and the state we want it to be using code and make those infrastructure deployment easily repeatable. So Pulumi is an open source solution for infrastructure as code and allows us to describe infrastructure in programming languages. Traditionally, uh, for example, if we take CloudFormation from AWS, uh, it allows us to describe infrastructure in JSON. Uh, another example would be Terraform, which uses a domain-specific language. Comparing that to Purumi, where you can use real programming languages, you can take advantage of a lot of the language features, such as control flow, loops, and conditional, which you wouldn't have in JSON. And you can use abstraction and easy, easily reuse your code and sharing uh, your code as packages. And another thing is that you can deploy to any major cloud provider. Uh, what's on my screen is just a small subset of them right now, but uh, you could even do Alibaba Cloud or uh, DigitalOcean if you want. A full list of it is available on the Pulumi website. And one last thing that I will be talking about is policy as code, where you can set up security or business policies that such that if any of your infrastructure deployment infringes any of those, they are blocked. And all that do, done using code. And I will have a practical demo about this later in this presentation. So let's have a look actually at what demos we will have. So firstly, I will uh, demo how to deploy a static website on Amazon uh, S3 using JavaScript. Our next demo after that is going to be deploying an EC2 web server using c -sharp this time. And finally, we will have a look at how to uh, enforce policy as code on those two previous deployments. So let's jump right into the demos. So we are now inside Visual Studio Code and I already have a Pulumi CLI set up with my AWS credentials. You can look up how to set up a Pulumi CLI for your cloud provider of choice on the Pulumi website. So how Pulumi works is that at the top you have an organization and within an organization you can have multiple projects. So right now we're gonna create a project using the command pro menu. 
and this will present us with a list of templates. And for a reminder, we are trying to deploy an S3 bucket website on AWS and that written in JavaScript right now. So I will choose the AWS JavaScript template and you have a few things to fill in, uh, like the project names and the descriptions and the stack. So if you want to have multiple deployments of the same application, you can use stacks. Let's say you want one instance of your deployment in a particular region and another one in another region. You could use uh, two different stacks to have two deployments of the same application. And once I hit enter, this would create a new project uh, as well as uh, install uh, dependencies for the code. That takes a minute, so I've already done that to save us some time. So let's just check the code out. So what this would, would give us is this list of files here. And let's check out the index.js. So in this file, you can see that we have our infrastructure defined. So it starts with a set of packages and you can see here we are constructing a bucket object and that's how infrastructure is declared in Prumi and at the end we are exporting uh, the bucket ID which will make the bucket ID available for the Prumi CLI later. So if you want to make this deployment right now, I would type Prumi up and it's gonna analyze the code and figure out what we want to deploy. And we should have a preview of the deployment in a few. So here's our preview. And Lumi has figured out that you want to deploy one bucket. And if we click on yes right now, it's gonna carry on and deploy our bucket to AWS. So now it's creating the bucket. And here we go, our bucket has been created and here we have our bucket ID which has been quoted. So right now we have an empty bucket. Let's add uh, an HTML file into it. Let's make up a bit folder to store our HTML files. And let's create an index.html file. Over quick. Let's add some content to it. Hello, guys. There we go. Then that's very quick. So now let's configure our bucket to actually uh, serve this file. So let's use the file system package to read the index.html file. So we want to create a bucket object for each file present in the public folder. So let's make a folder. So read each file present in the public folder. So we want to create a new S3 bucket object.
there we go and to that we want to pass file in and we have a set of arguments also that we need to pass so since this is going to be served over the internet we want this file to have the acl uh, public read and the bucket we want to store this file and is the bucket that we created above here and I can reference to that bucket object and we want the file to be stored as the same file name and set the source to the public slash file so this is the path to the file that we actually want to upload and for it to be served correctly to browsers you must also set the content die to text slash html so here we go oh, whoops that should be here So now we are reading every file that, in the, that is in the public directory and for each file we are creating a new bucket object which is going to be stored in this bucket here and the next thing that we need to do is to set up our actual bucket to be hosting our website so besides the name of the bucket we have some orgs that we can pause so we can say website so we want to say that our index document is gonna be index.html that we are gonna upload. Notice how I got nice code compl completion while coding. And let's say I did not know what kind of arguments this bucket object takes. I could just inspect it and have a look at the bucket orgs. And here I would have a list of all the arguments or as well as the type is nice so we are ready to deploy one last step we also want to get the url of this bucket once it's deployed so we can access our website so i'm gonna export the uh, website endpoint of this bucket and i'm gonna call it bucket url Here. So here we go. Now we are ready to deploy. I'm just gonna type pull me up. And once again it's gonna preview our update. And since we have already deployed this before, it's gonna just compare what we define with what's already been deployed and show us the changes so it has seen that now we configured the bucket to host the website and we have created a new bucket object which is index.html and here in the summary you can see that it has to create a new uh, resource and one resource is being updated go forward and click yes So our bucket has been deployed and we now have a bucket URL. Let's check it out in the browser. I'm just going to copy the URL and paste it in the browser. And here we go. Our static website is up. And that's pretty much it. 
to deploy a website using AWS S3 bucket with Pulumi. And all that's left now is to destroy the resources that we, we have created. So to do that, the command is Pulumi destroy. And once again, we get a preview which tells us that we will have three resources which are going to be deleted. Go in and say yes. And that's it. That's the basics of how to get started with Pulumi and deploying a static web website to AWS S3. And now we can move on to our second demo. So our second demo is going to be deploying an EC2 instance, which is going to be running a simple web server. And we're going to do that in c -sharp this time. So let's go back to our demo folder. And once again, I'm going to do Pulumi just for demonstration. And you can send the templates. We got an AWS c -sharp template but for the sake of saving time once again i've already created that template so this time when we create uh, this template we have a c -sharp project we have the cs project file and we do have a program that cs and my stack that cs let's have a look at the program that cs file So we do have a task which is trying to run a deployment of type my stack. So, so let's look at the definition of my stack. So once again, the default template comes with a bucket and this time we want to deploy an EC2 instance. So we have the default template code over here, which I'm going to delete. And we have to do a few things to get so there's a few things that we're going to have to do to deploy this EC2 instance. Let me just list them out so we can keep track of this. Firstly, we want to grab the Amazon Linux AMI, which is going to be the OS running our, on our EC2 instance. And secondly, we want to create a security group. And lastly, we want to define our instance. So let's start with the first one. I'm actually going to cheat a little bit with this. And I'm just going to paste in some code which does the retrieving of the AMI. And we can see we have some references missing here. And the last thing is that if I hit control dot, I get uh, good completion. Nice. And this is going to retrieve the Amazon Linux AMI. And next, we want to define the security group. So the security group contains a set of rules which define what kind of connection to the server is allowed. So let's start by creating a security group object. So we'll go to new security group and I can just add them the same package here. And we're going to call it. And it also takes security group arguments. And once again, if you're not familiar with the arguments, you can just go to the definition and read about it, which is nice. And so to that, we want to add some ingress rules. 
and this takes security grouping with orgs. And once again, I can just add the missing visuals. And we want the protocol to be TCP. And since we want to allow connections only on the port 80, connect from port 80, port 80. And the final thing that we want to add is the interdomain routing block is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, slash 0 to allow any IP to connect to this machine. So should we set to the security group? All that's left is to define our actual instance. So let's create a new server. This is gonna be a new instance object. And once again, we're gonna give it a name, called web server. And it's gonna take instance arguments. And so we want to give the instance type gonna go for the free T2 micro instance and now we have to specify our security group and we're gonna refer to the group that we created just above so this is the group that we created and I'm just gonna grab its ID and again, the AMI, which we also grabbed up there. So I'm just gonna grab the ID from that. And lastly, the user data. So the user data is just a script that you want to run on starter. So, and for the web server, for this instance, we're just gonna run a simple HTTP uh, server on port 80. So let me just grab a little bash, bash script to do that real quick. So here we go. And let's just change that to say something a little bit more interesting. So let's say hello from the city. Here we go. And now I believe we do have everything. So once again, we have to output the URL to this uh, EC2 instance so we can access it. So let me just change that to a bit. Your and here we are gonna do this that uh public URL is equal to the server's public tennis and this should give us a URL so we can access the server. So with that I think we are ready to deploy the server. Once again we do pull me up. And this time, building this project with .NET. And as our preview, and you know, I'm going to do this update.
So our server has been deployed and we do have a public URL. Let's check that out. And there we go. Our server is indeed running. And with that, we are ready to move to our third demo, which is going to be Policia's code. And first, let's just get rid of those resources with Gloomy Destroy. And if you want to skip the preview, you can do dash dash yes. And it just a little bit quicker. Let's clean up a little bit and we're going to move on to Policia's code. So, Policia's code is a set of rules that you define. And if ever any of your deployments is violating those rules, then it will prevent the deployment from going on. And the way to create a new policy is to type Gloomy Policy New. And once again, we get a few templates, but they are not quite the same as uh, project templates. And this time, let's go with TypeScript. And actually, to be a little bit faster and not have to wait for dependencies. Once again, I've already created the policy block. So once you create that template, you will be, you will have a TypeScript project. Let's check out the index.ts. So this is our basic policy here. So as you can see, there's some imports at the top and we have a policy pack. So a policy pack contains a set of policies that we want to run our deployments through to see if they are violating any rules or validation that we might set. And in this case, policy does not allow uh, S3 buckets to have public read or public read write ACLs. And we have an enforcement level, which is mandatory, uh, which means that if we are enforcing this policy and we try to deploy a public S3 bucket, this deployment will be blocked. And the validation is done by this block of code here. It checks if the bucket is here is public read or public read write. And if that's the case, then it's going to report a violation. So let's just give this uh, template policy a go on the S3 bucket that we created in the first demo. So let's go back to our S3 website and Check out the index that yes. So let's say that we had the ACL uh, defined as public read here. And, and let's try to deploy this S3 bucket, but with the policy that we just created. And we expect it to be in violation of that policy. So it screw me up the slash policy pack. Then the directory of the policy pack. Then the post policy pack is one folder up. And we can see the preview fail, and we have a policy violation here. And it's referencing our TypeScript policy pack and gives you the details about why it's failing. So it has detected that the SCL is public read and we are indeed violating a policy. And the deployment has been stopped. So this is how policy packs work. 
And this brings us to the end of my demos today. Hope you enjoyed. So that's it for me for today. Uh, there's tons of awesome examples. If you want to try it, follow me on github.com slash me slash examples. And it's a pleasure sponsoring this event with event store. And at the moment, we have a few open positions and we are hiring. If you want to know more, you can check out the positions on eventstore.com slash careers. And feel free to get in touch with me on Twitter. If you want to talk about event store, follow me or grab one of those stickers on screen. Thank you very much. Back to the host. Thank you very much, Stesh. Thank you very much, Neil, for this awesome presentation. It was short but sweet. Um, uh, so, any any more things you would like to add to it? And um, yep, be sure to tune in in the following sessions from Event Store from today. We have an amazing session from Yorick, which is going to introduce uh, the concept of event sourcing with Rust later. And yes, have a nice day, everyone. Have a nice day, and we'll see you in 30 minutes.